Hello and welcome to part 5 of the same game tutorial for Rampai and let's just jump straight back into it. So in the last part we created a for loop which is iterating through our matches list and then we created an if statement and this if statement is checking whether or not the icon residing to the right of the current one in the for loop has an index which is less than grid size. And why are we checking this? Well, because very soon we are going to create another if statement and we're going to use this value as the index position inside of icons list. And if we have an index of, for example, 99 and we're plusing that with one, we get 100. And 100 is unfortunately out of range for the icons list and will therefore throw us an error. So with this check, we are making sure that we're not getting that error in the first place. So with that said, let's go ahead and create the next if statement. And this if statement is going to have four different conditions, which are going to check for different things. And the first one we are going to create is going to check if the current icon in the for loop and the one residing to the right of it has the same icon type. And if it does, then we know that we have a match. So let's go ahead and write that now. If icon dot icon type is equal to icons list and then inside of the square brackets we'll write icon index plus one and then outside of it we'll type dot icon type so now we have a check to see whether or not the icon in the for loop and the icon residing to the right of it has the same icon type and if it does, then we have a match. The next condition we want to create is going to be one that checks if our current icon inside of the for loop happens to reside on the last column of the grid. And if it does, then we don't want to try and match this with the icon residing to the right because that icon is actually starting on the next row in the first column. And these two shouldn't be able to match. So in order to prevent that, we are going to create this condition which is going to look like this and icon dot index plus one modulus icons per row does not equal zero. Now the last condition is going to check if the icon to the right isn't already added to the matches list and if it is we don't want to add it again. So we're going to write and icons list icon dot index plus one not in matches so now if this if statement evaluates to true then we want to make sure that we add this right icon into the matches list so let's go ahead and do that now so we're going to write matches append and then we can copy paste this icons list with the correct index value into this and now to see if this actually works correctly let's go ahead and print out into the debug console what the matches list looks like so we're going to write print matches and then we'll save and run the game so here inside of our game, let's go ahead and find an icon that has a matching one to the right of it, such as this one, which has two matching icons to the right. So let's go ahead and click on the first one and see what we get printed out in the console. So here inside of the console, we can see that we have two lines printed out, which represents the two different iterations of our loop. The first time we got two objects into the matches list. The first one is the icon that we clicked on and the second one is the one that was matching it to the right. In the second iteration we have the icon that we clicked on and the icon that matched next to it as well as the third one that was next to the second one. So now we know that this works correctly. So let's exit this and go back to the code. So now that we are back into the code, let's go ahead and remove this print statement as we no longer need it. And then we can go ahead and create the other if statements, 
which are going to check if we have any matches in the other directions. And the next if statement that we are going to create is going to check in the downwards direction. And to do that, we're first going to make a new line and go into the correct indentation. And then we're going to write this. If icon index is less or equal to grid size minus icons per row minus one. So how does this if statement actually work? Well, we're trying to check if the current icons index is less or equal to grid size, which is 100 in this case, minus icons per row, which is 10. And so this now equals to 90 minus one, which equals to 89. So if the icons index is less or equal to 89, then we can safely check if there's an icon underneath this one and see if this matches. So now any icon that resides above the last row can attempt at matching with one below it. So now we can go ahead and create the other if statement that goes inside of this one. And it is going to look like this. If icon dot icon type is equal to icons list and inside of the square brackets, we'll write icon dot index plus icons per row. And then outside of the square brackets, we'll write dot icon type. And then we want to add another condition, which is going to check if the icon residing underneath the current one in the for loop is already added to the matches list. And if it is, then we obviously don't want to add it again. So we're going to write and icons list. And inside of the square brackets, we'll write icon index plus icons per row. And then outside of it, we'll write not in matches, just like we did before. So now if this if statement is true, we want to add the icon that resides underneath the current one in the for loop into the matches list. So we're going to write matches dot append icons list icon index plus icons per row. So now that we have that done, Let's go ahead and create the next set of if statements that is going to check if we have any matches to the left. So we make a new line and go to the correct indentation. And then we're going to say if icon index minus one is more or equal to zero. And this we are checking because our current icons index may be zero and therefore residing in the first position of the grid. And if we're trying to match this with an icon that resides to the left, we're going to get an error because we don't have any more icons to the left. So with that done, let's go ahead and create the next if statement. And it is going to look like this. If icon icon type is equal to icons list icon index minus one and then outside of the brackets dot icon type and this is pretty much what we have done before which is changing what we're putting inside of the brackets of the icons list to make sure that we are comparing the right icons and then we're going to continue and we're going to say and icon dot index modulus icons per row does not equal to zero. So why are we checking this? Well, because if the current icon in the for loop resides on the first column of any row, then we don't want to try and match this with an icon to the left because we don't have any more icons to the left. However, it's going to try and match with an icon on the last column on the row above instead, and this is not what we want. So with this check, we are making sure that this does not happen. So with that said, we're going to continue and create another condition. And it's going to be like we have done before. Namely, we're going to check that the icon that resides next to the current one in the for loop isn't already added to the matches list. 
So we're going to write icons list icon index minus one not in matches. And then just as before, we're going to add the icon residing to the left into the matches list. So we're going to write matches append icons list and then icon index minus one. So with that done, we have successfully created three different checks to see if we have any matches to the right, to the left and downwards. So now we only have one more to create and that is going to check if we have any matches upwards. So let's make a new line and then we're going to write if icon index is more or equal to icons per row. So as long as the current icon in the for loop has an index that is more than icons per row, then we can safely check upwards if there's an icon that matches. And then we're going to write if icon icon type is equal to icons list icon index minus icons per row dot icon type and then we'll add the next condition which is going to as before check if the icon residing above has already been added to the matches list so we'll write and icons list icon index minus icons per row not in matches and then as usual we're going to add the matching icon to the matches list so we're making a new line and we're going to write matches append icons list icon index minus icons per row so now we have added all of the necessary code that we need in order to detect matches in different directions and add these to the matches list. So now we could go ahead and test the game, but in order to get any useful information from the test, let's go ahead and add some print statements to each of these if statements so that we can see better what's happening. So let's go up to the first one and add a print statement underneath the matches append line. So we're going to say print match right and then we can copy this and paste it underneath here and we're going to say match down and then for the next one match left and the last one match up so now we can see exactly when a match is happening and for which direction so let's go ahead and test that now in the game. So now that we are back inside of our game again, let's go ahead and identify a group of matching icons and click on one of these to see what we could print it out in the console. So let's start out with something fairly simple to begin with, such as these two icons up here. So if I click on the top one, we should get one line of text printed out saying match down. So let's go ahead and try that. And then we'll open up the console and in here we can see that we have gotten one line of text printed out saying match down. So this is working as intended. Now let's go back and see what else we can find. And this time let's go ahead and try something a little bit more complicated such as this set of matches down here. So if I click on this icon for example we should get three lines of text printed out saying two matches to the right and one down. So let's go ahead and see if this works. So here we can see we are getting three lines of text printed out. Two of them say match right and one of them says match down. So now we know that this is working correctly for all the different directions. So in the next part we are going to find a way to delete the matches that we have put inside of our matches list and then also shift the icons around to fill the empty gaps. But as I said, this is going to have to be in the next part. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.